Hello. Hi, everyone. Jason and Chrissy talking. Hi. Overstim. Okay. When I point to you, Chrissy, that means <laughs> that's a cue for you to say something. Talking about overstimulation and understimulation uh, in autism. Yeah, we just learned, we about, just this. learned about this. We found an article. And it, like clicked. Oh, uh, it was like us. an aha moment. We're like, so, oh my God. Find that to be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so we're going to unpack what we learned and have like just a little conversation as we learn about it because like we, we're still exploring autism and like when we find something like this that just like really uh, reflects our life back to us so vividly, we have these aha moments and they're really fun to unpack. So this one's on like simulation and it, it kind of goes off of sensory like, you know, um, sometimes if you're autistic, like things can, can really overwhelm you. So you might wear head, I wear headphones, like noise canceling headphones or, th or, um, a yeah, lot of people fidget with would something. Would you say that you're like, um, pro maybe prone to being overstimulated? I think, I actually think learning about it, I'm prone to being understimulated. You're prone to being understimulated. Yeah, because when I look at the, read the article, like a lot of the behavior for understimulated, I can find I do in certain settings, like meetings and things, very okay. understimulated. And I'm in a lot of meetings. Okay. And so like, I think right now in my life, based on like what I have to do from day to day, there's a lot of moments where I um, feel understimulated. So I naturally respond a particular way, but awareness is all you need. So now that I understand that, I'm behaving the way I am because I'm understimulated. I can now do things to eliminate uh, outbursts or eliminate uh, toxic behaviors or unhealthy behaviors for others so that I can have a more um, joyful experience. And so for example, uh, when you are, well, let's go over overstimulated first okay. and then we can like deep dive into understimulated. Okay. So overstimulated, this is an article, um, Get in flow is the uh, inflow is the um, place. It's just an article that I'm kind of pulling from to have the conversation. Um, but when you are uh, overstimulated, you'll feel fried. Some people say their brain is full of static or they're hot and angry. For me, when I am overstimulated, and I 100% know how this feels, I feel like I'm waterlogged. I literally feel like I've been in the lake all day. I'm super tired and my brain feels foggy right? That's how I feel when I've, I'm overstimulated. And I can get overstimulated by being on my phone too long, by watching too much TV. Um, it's very, very easy for me to like, get overstimulated. Would you say it's doing something for longer than you should or something? Yeah, or like doing it to an unhappy, it right. It doesn't really matter what it is. But if I, if I do something too long, I will feel very waterlogged. If it's not like something I'm, you know, there's a difference because sometimes I'm really locked into doing something and it's actually very positive for me. And that's talked about in this article as well. And I was like, oh man, that makes so much sense. So you have to figure out what uh, actually provides like a very positive experience for you and then what doesn't. And so, uh -huh. yeah, so I know the things that are unhealthy for me. I have to just monitor those. And then I know the things that I really enjoy doing and those actually give to me. Mm. So it's so like an exploration. Cool. Yeah. And so understimulated, which I find very, just very fascinating here is like, um, yeah, we're very fascinated in the understimulating thing. It just kind of like was an aha moment for both of us. But when you, you're feeling physically hyperactive, like you just want to move, speak or do something, feeling like something isn't right in a setting and feeling irritable about it. That's me in like almost all of our meetings, like uh, becoming impatient with those around you. Uh, and wanting things to happen in, like instantly, uh, being in your own world or lost in daydreaming, which happens to Jason and I a lot, being uh, a more combative to people around you, starting arguments over things you would not normally start arguments over, fidgeting, feeling unmotivated. And uh, yeah, so those really kind of hit mm -hmm. like home with us. Like we were like, wow, we didn't realize we were yeah. understimulated. So uh, as long as I can remember, from when I was, from when I could, when I was a little kid, as far back as I can remember, I was, it was me and my imagination, and I had like friends and all that kind of stuff. I always like kind of gravitated to my imagination, um, you know, playing with GI Joes and 
do you know mm-hmm. in my like uh ha- you know in my own imaginative uh storylines in my head and like um it was always the um the most interesting thing for me right like right. I, fi- I found that the actual experiences that uh i may have with people weren't as cool as they were in my imagination right and so like oh yeah we talked about that i always kind of gravitated toward occupying myself through my imagination and so when i would be under stimulated which was probably quite a bit uh i would always you know be in my thoughts be in my you know be in my imagination and like that would entertain me that would occupy myself right um for me like uh I would doodle a lot. Like I was a doodler. And so I was talking, I was sharing this with Jason, like what I would do. And I was reading on of what to do if you're understimulated. And one of the first things it said to do was like doodle or color, um, which I found funny. So like a fidget spinner is very often um, utilized by people with autism or even ADHD that need to just uh, be doing something with their hands or their body movements. Um, and then there's some other things that you can do here. One of which we're going to research more is body doubling. And what this is, um, and I will link this particular article in the comments below, but body doubling is where another person keeps you company, either physically or virtually. So you might be on the phone with somebody and you're not doing much talking, but you're doing something and you're keeping each other company. And I find the two of us do that quite often. Like we'll be on the phone with each other and one of them, somebody will be doing something. The other one's just there with them. And um, I find that very peaceful for whatever reason. And it like um, is very calming and relaxing. And so like, if I'm at work, for example, and he's at home, like, um, you know, working in the kitchen, it's not often, it's not often but I do find sure. that it does happen. And mm-hmm. that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Now there's a difference between un- like understimulation or overstimulation and hyper-focus. And I found this so interesting because Hyper focus. I, this happens to me often when I'm really into something I, I want to do. I could sit and do it for hours and it feels amazing. And like this is a lot for me with data analysis, with like putting together case studies or doing anything with data specifically or spreadsheets, finances. I really enjoy that. I can do that stuff for hours and it, I feel like. I'm on cloud nine. I genuinely enjoy it. So it's a positive experience for me. So it's really important to identify those things that are a positive experience. And then those things that result in, you know, like over stimuli or like over um, stimulation. So you can, you know, balance properly. I find that interesting. So yeah, that was really cool article that we came across uh, that really opened our eyes to our own behavior and what we've experienced um, in regards to stimulation. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time.